All right, Shalom. I'm going to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah, Bahasham, Rakhakadash. I want to give double honors to the elder apostles and the elders of Great Millstone and GMS. And I want to say peace and blessings unto the elect. Okay. And um, what I'm going to do I will, uh, is go through the Spirit, go through. Uh, First Kings, the third chapter, okay? And as I read it, uh, touch on points because um, this is this chapter, as you can see, you may be able to see right there in the heading. Uh, and I'll just read the heading. It says, uh, Solomon marries Pharaoh's daughter. Um, the high place is being in use. He sacrifices at Gibeon. He chooses wisdom, okay? His judgment between two harlots, okay? Because um, as as we go, as I read through this uh, account, you'll see what King Solomon asked for, okay? In a dream, okay, of the Heavenly Father. All right, so I'm going to read through it, and for the sake of time, I'm going I'm to try to read it kind of fast, okay? And um, as I said, just touch on different points as I go through. So without further ado, this is 1 Kings chapter 3 and verse 1. It says, And Solomon made affinity with Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and took Pharaoh's daughter and brought her into the city of David until he had made an end of building his own house and the house of the Lord, Yahweh Yahweh and the wall of Jerusalem round about. Okay. And that word affinity uh, means to uh, become uh, basically by him taking her to marry, you know, becoming kin, okay, uh, through the marriage, all right? Um, and you can look it up for yourself in the blue letter. But uh, just to go on, there's this Wisdom of Solomon 3 and 2. It says, only the people sacrificed in high places. Because there was no house built unto the name of the Lord Yahweh Bashem Yahweh until those days. And Solomon loved the Lord Yahweh Bashem Yahweh walking in the statutes of David his father, only he sacrificed and burnt incense in high places. And the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was the great high place. A thousand burnt offerings did Solomon offer upon the altar. In Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And the Most High said, ask what I shall give thee. Okay. And at this point, you know, in this dream, King Solomon, he could have asked for anything. Okay. And you, you, uh, as we go on, we're going to see what he asked for. Okay. And this is what in a, a key thing that brothers should be praying for, okay, and asking the Heavenly Father to give them more of, all right, so I'm going to read on, this is wisdom, uh, Salakia, <laughs> wisdom of Solomon, this is uh, <laughs> uh, 1 Kings chapter 3, and uh, I'll read 5 again, it says, in Gibeon, the Lord Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, ask what I shall give thee, and Solomon said, thou hast showed unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy, according as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness and in uprightness of heart with thee. And thou hast kept from Salaki, and thou hast kept for him this great kindness, that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. And now, O Yahweh, my power, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David, my father, and I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or come in. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen a great people that cannot be numbered nor counted for multitude. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people that I may discern, okay, between good and bad, okay? This is what we should be asking for, 
more understanding of this word because the more you the more understanding that you have of this word the better judge you become okay this is our standard this is the the measuring stick this is what we use to discern and judge between good and bad okay these law statutes and commandments okay it's a uh, uh first kings chapter 3 in verse 9, give therefore thy servant an understanding heart, okay, to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad, for who is able to judge this thy so great people, great a people. And the speech pleased the, the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh that Solomon had asked this thing. And the Most High said unto him, because thou hast asked this thing, and has not asked for thyself, okay, long life, all right, he didn't ask for that, okay, he didn't ask for long life, okay, neither has asked riches for thyself, okay, he didn't ask for riches for himself, okay, because these type of things, okay, are, are, are flesh pleasing, okay, just to get to the nitty gritty, these things are, are, are pleasing to the flesh. Long life, okay, uh, riches, okay, they satisfy your flesh, okay. He said, neither has asked for riches for thyself, nor has asked the life of thine enemies, okay. He didn't even ask what, that's, what that mean, asking for the life of his enemies, for his enemies' lives. Okay, which ain't nothing wrong with that. Okay, because we send up curses all the time. Okay, it ain't nothing wrong with that. We we constantly ask the Most High, you know, to bring this wicked kingdom to an end. That's the life of our enemies. Okay, that's asking for the life of our enemies. Okay, but here and it. So what I'm getting the point of that is, is nothing wrong with that. Okay, contrary to what. These so-called churches will teach you, you know, oh, pray for them and bless them. When the scriptures say, bless your enemies and curse not, that's talking about your brothers, man. That's when your brother, uh, uh, when you and your, when you have problems with your brother, man, okay? You're supposed to pray for your brother, okay? Those that do the will of your how about Shem Yahweh Shai, okay? Those are your fathers, just like the Lord said, okay? Who is my father? Who is my mother? Who is my brother? You know, who's his family? The ones that do the will of his father, okay? Roughly paraphrasing, okay? But let me go back, all right? Uh, 1 Kings 3 and 11, it says, And God said unto him, Because thou hast asked this thing, and hast not asked for thyself long life, neither hast asked, for, asked riches for thyself, nor has asked the life of thine enemies, but has asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment. Okay? And that's what we're supposed to be constantly praying for. Okay? More a heightened level of discernment to judge, man. Because we're being groomed to be righteous judges here on the earth. Okay? Verse 12, 1 Kings chapter 3 and verse 12, it says, Behold, I have done according to thy words. Lo, I have given thee a wise and an understanding heart, meaning your mind. Wise and understanding, okay? So that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. Okay? The wisest men, okay? Uh, verse 13, it says, And I have also given thee that which thou hast not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all thy days. Okay? Verse 14, And if thou wilt walk in my ways to keep my statutes and my commandments, as thy father David did walk, then I will lengthen thy days. You see? The most high I'll give you increase, okay? Now, mind you, we in the last days, man. But he will give the most high. When you pray the Lord's Prayer, in that prayer, it says, give us this day our daily bread, man. 
okay? And that sustains us, okay? We're not trying to ball, all right? We ain't, you know, because in all actuality, all this is building up, okay? We're gathering riches for the kingdom of heaven. And a matter of fact, let me grab that right quick in the book of St. Matthew, the sixth chapter, okay? If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, St. Matthew chapter 6 and 19, it says, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Okay? And that's what we're doing. All right? The more understanding, these are the jewels. These are the precious treasures. Okay? This is everlasting life, which can't com be compared to, to gold, silver, diamonds, rubies, sapphires, Whatever, man, okay, whatever precious stones and whatever precious metals you can think of, okay? Because as the, the verse above in 19, it says, where thieves break through and steal, all those things can be stolen, okay? But we're, we're, we're praying and building up spiritual treasures in the king, for the kingdom of heaven, man. L but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rut doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal, okay? For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also, okay? Because it's easy to get caught up on that crap, okay? And that type of stuff will uh, uh, walk you straight up out of here, man, okay? But let me go back to uh, 1 Kings chapter 3 and uh, 14. It says, And if thou wilt walk in my ways to keep my statutes and my commandments as thy father David did, then will I lengthen thy days, okay? Then these things is added, okay? It says, and Solomon awoke, because again, this, this was in a dream, okay? And behold, it was a dream, all right? I could have just kept reading, all right? It says, and he came to Jerusalem and stood before the ark of the covenant of the Lord, Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, and offered up burnt offerings, and offered peace offerings and made a feast to all his servants. Okay. Then came there two women that were harlots. Okay. And if you don't know what a harlot is, okay, apparently you are living on a different planet. Okay. Uh, prostitutes. Okay. Okay. So two prostitutes, two harlots. Came unto the king, okay? So let me read that again. First Kings 3 and 16. Then came there two women that were harlots unto the king and stood before him. And the one woman said, O oh my Lord, I and this woman, <laughs> she called Solomon Lord, okay? And as you see, in matter of fact, you can see it on the screen. Is uh, oh no, 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 I'm sorry. You can't see it on the screen. I'm on the other side. But it's all lowercase. Okay, so that's, that's, that was a common thing, okay? Wives called their husbands Lord, okay? Because they had rule over them, okay? P people got to get out of this wacky tacky uh, plantation Christianity mind frame, man, okay? But let me go back and I'm, so I can get back through this, go through this, okay? Uh, 1 Kings 3 and 16. Then came there two women that were harlots unto the king and stood before him. And the one woman said, O oh my Lord, I and this woman dwell in one house, meaning they live together. And I was delivered of a child with her in the house. Okay. And it came to pass the third day after that I was delivered that this woman was delivered also. So they both had children. Both had a, 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 they both gave birth. Okay, and we were together. There was no stranger with us in the house, save we two in the house. So it was just them and they two children. Okay, and this woman's child died in the night. Okay, because she overlaid it. All right, and she arose at midnight and took my son from beside me while thine handmaid slept. And laid it in her bosom and laid her dead child in my bosom. 
And when I arose, Salaki, and when I rose in the morning to give my child suck, okay, which is something that ain't common no more, women breastfeeding, behold, it was dead. But when I had considered it in the morning, behold, it was not my son, which I did bear. She knew it wasn't her child, okay? Verse 22. And the other woman said, Nay, but the living is my son. And the dead is thy son. And this said, no. But the dead is thy son. And the living is my son. Thus they spake before the king. So he was going back and forth. Okay. Then said the king. The one said, this is my son that liveth. And thy son is the dead. And the other said, nay. But thy son is the dead. And my son is the living. Okay. And the king said, Bring me a sword. Okay. So the discernment that the king had prayed for, King Solomon had, okay, he got he got tricky with him. He got, you know, he got he got slick with him, man. He was like, okay, I know one way to get down to the bottom of this. Bring me a sword. Okay. And I'm gonna read on. Okay? But this is because he had prayed for discernment, man. Greater discernment, okay? Greater understanding, okay? To discern between good and bad, okay? Verse 24. And the king said, bring me a sword. And they brought a sword before the king. And the king said, divide the living child in two. And give half to the one and half to the other. Then spake the woman whose the living child was unto the king, for her bowels yearned upon her son, and she said, O oh my Lord, give her the living child, and in no wise slay it. But the other said, Let it be neither mine nor thine, but divide it. Now right here, you can already discern who the child belonged to, man. Okay? So King Solomon knew just what to do because this is what he had asked for in his dream, okay? So he got, he's like, all right, bring that sword here. We're going to split this child. The, 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 the mother of the child, the true mother of that living child, it's going to show, okay? Let me keep it simple. It's going to show, man, okay? Verse 27, then the king answered and said, give her the living child, and in no wise slay it. She is the mother thereof, Okay? And all Israel heard of the judgment of uh, Salaki. And all Israel heard of the judgment which the king had judged. And they feared the king. For they saw that the wisdom of the heavenly father was in him to do judgment. Okay. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to read back from 26. It says, Then spake the woman who the living child was unto the king. For her bowels yearned upon her son. And she said, Oh my Lord, give her the living child. And in no wise slay it. Okay? So the woman who the, the, the child who the living child who was really for, King Solomon saw her compassion towards that child, man. But the other said, Let it be neither mine nor thine, but divide it. So it was like she didn't care. And King Solomon said, Okay. If that was really her child, she wouldn't have took that approach and had that attitude towards that child. Go ahead and divide it. Give her a piece and give me the other piece. Nah, man. So King Solomon right there saw, okay, that's her child. Because if it had been whoever's child it is, they going to want that child to live. That's why they in here now. Okay? It's a... Oh, my Lord, give her the living child, and in no wise slay it. But the other said, let it be neither mine nor thine, but divide it. So right there he knew that that wasn't hers, okay? Then the king answered and said, give her the living child, and in no wise slay it. She is the mother thereof. He knew it. But the point of this lesson was for what he had asked for in the dream, man. Okay? Understanding and discernment. Okay, to judge the children of Israel, man, to be a righteous judge, man. And that's what we're supposed to be 
you know, th that's that's one of the things we're supposed to be praying for. OK, more understanding, more discernment. OK, to judge our people, man. OK. So I'm going to read verse 28 and I'm going to close it right there. All right. Uh, First Kings 3 and 28. And all Israel heard of the judgment which the king had judged and they feared the king. For they saw that the wisdom of the heavenly father was in him to do judgment. Okay. And that's it. I just wanted to bring that out because this is what I read today. You know. Uh, and I was like, you know, that's, that, that's a good little lesson. I, I, I do that as a lesson, you know, through the spirit. Okay. So, um, you know, as always, Lord willing, there was edification in this lesson. But again, let me reiterate, this is uh this is what we should be asking the Heavenly Father for, man. One of the things that we should be asking the Heavenly Father for more of, okay, to be better judges, okay? And you become a better judge by getting uh, a greater understanding of the scriptures, okay? So, again, Lord willing, there was edification in this, and I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah, Bahasham, Rakakwadash. I want to give double honors to the elder apostles and the elders of Great Millstone of GMS. And I want to say peace and blessings uh, to the elect, okay, of the nation of Israel. All right. And until the next time, I say Shalom.